sweet. Good morning, sir. What's happening, brother? Oh, you know, five. Uh, five. Just shaking and baking, man. Yeah, no, man, that's that's uh that's awesome to hear. It's, it, I'm glad you showed up and made it. And uh, yeah, again, yeah, thank I'm you up, for your time. I'm up, I'm up at five, four thirty, four thirty, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's it's uh it's been quite the the journey to to change my ways. And I'm, I'm hoping I can get a chance to talk to you. I don't want to bore you too much, but uh, definitely yeah. want to appreciate you being here. So absolutely, glad. So. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how I'm going to do this is, you know, I'm going to use this recording, this audio for the podcast. So I'll go back and butcher it and clean it up. All and, right, yeah. and then what I was hoping to do, and like I said, my ADHD got the best of me, um, you know, to uh, share it via the Instagram. So if you have your phone with you, um, or I don't know if you're on your phone, um, I could share it via the live and you can I be on there at the same time and people can kind of see it that way, kind of see the experience. Uh, we'll just... I don't like overbear, you know, overloading my sure. Instagram with stuff. So sure. like, you know, we'll just do the podcast and then whatever, I'll just post a link or a clip, whatever you, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, no, I appreciate that. So um, anyways, uh, y'all ready? And yeah, Jack and Joan. So nice. So, you know, my, my purpose of this podcast is basically, you know, helping others. And, and then I, I kind of thought about it, like, I'm going to help others with PMA because that's um, a lot of what you have taught me through your books and, and everything else. So, you know, I wanted to kind of go through uh, your books first. And, and first of all, tell me a little bit more about Meat is for Pussies and uh, give me your, you know, your stance on that. I wanted to kind of take the two things that I took away from it, but. Yeah. Um, well, you but, know, it's, it's, it's tongue in cheek, man. It's uh, uh, Harper Collins. We, we, we put the book out ourselves, and did about 5,000 copies, and then Harper Collins picked it up. And uh, which is, you know, a huge, you know, uh, publisher. Mm -hmm. So basically, I was like, you know, you, you want to tone the book down a little bit, change the title. They were like, no, yeah. we want you to be disruptive and you got to be you, man. We love what you do. And then, like, yeah when the book came out and the vegan feminists attacked they basically cut ties with me and threw me under the fucking bus they wanted me to start apologizing and sending what? letters to i'm like get the fuck out of here like i'm not <laughs> doing that like yeah yeah but you know the interesting fact is these people are just a small demographic but you know, they, because of the Me Too thing and everything, they've managed to basically, like, you know, do some damage as far as, like, uh, you know, book sales. And, I mean, they, you know, just went down fucking uh, just following everything I do and then reaching out to those people, like Lululemon campaign I had and just everything. And, documentary films i was in and yeah. and and saying they're going to protest if i do the q a for like fucking cowspiracy or whatever the fuck like in new york which i set the premiere up for the dude like he's my yeah. friend yeah so yeah. like you know they did the same thing to rory freeman uh who wrote skinny bitch because she said you know skinny bitch like you know yeah. They have no uh, kind of sense of humor or anything about anything. And, uh, you know, but the book basically, uh, you know, I think about 80% of all the copies that were purchased were purchased uh, by women who bought it for their dude who, you know, refused to change and didn't like the way that any of the other, you know, I don't call myself a vegan, but, you know, what these people that promote this whole lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Uh, how they were putting it and you know I come from the streets of New York so I just put it in my uh, tone and vernacular and fucking they, they were they've been they're eating it up you know yeah. and uh, it's yeah. just uh, I mean I even went on Joe Ro when I was on Joe Rogan's podcast that was like one of the first things he He's like, yeah, vegan. I'm like, I don't call myself a vegan. He goes, yeah, yeah but you wrote the the book Meat is for Pussies, man. What what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, yeah but dude, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's when you break open the cover, the first thing I say is that, you know, it's saying that someone will be, you know, 
a feeble human being uh, if they continue to lead a, a lifestyle, a sedentary lifestyle, eating all this poisonous food. There's companies that have a direct, and I'm writing about this now in my new book. I just really fucking went down the rabbit hole and researched all these companies that put all these medications out and they also sell chemicals that cause the diseases that they're selling the meds for and Monsanto and all these, yep. you know, people that are these fucking scumbag companies that are doing this shit and poisoning people. Uh, you know, it's, it, the real global pandemic is, is what these motherfuckers is doing, you know, to our health. Yeah. That, you know, it's, it's, it's the 21st century health apocalypse you know mm. what's the number one killer in america is heart disease, heart disease like, yeah. you know yeah. they know what's causing it if you watch forks over knives then mm -hmm. you know anyway the book's just a great reference point that allows uh other people to uh you know go down the rabbit hole and uh continue their research and i've gotten thousands of uh you know emails and yeah. People hit me up saying they, they changed and, and, and they lost weight, reverse disease and all kinds of stuff. Even one friend had inoperable brain cancer, sent them down the rabbit hole to do all this stuff. They gave him six months to live. Well, guess what? Last year he ran, uh, he ran a, a half marathon and he beat uh -huh. his cancer by eliminating the poisons out of the body. Cancer is a way of the body saying, hey man, stop what the fuck you're doing, man. Yeah. Something's wrong here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your DNA is being ruined by, by um, free radicals and the rest of the stuff that people are ingesting, it, you know? So, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. it's good to be able to, I'm not a doctor, but I point people in the direction of those that are doctors and have credentials. So that's what I do. Yeah. No. And I, and I, you know, that's the thing I, I love about you is that you don't, you know, you're not stigmatized by that word vegan, right? You, you correct people, you influence them positively, you know, and send them in that right direction. But the thing I took away from your book was, you know, uh, the animal's perspective, tell you the truth. And I, and I never really thought of it that way. Like the chemicals yeah. of the fear that, and I kind of researched a little bit about that, like the fear that we get when we're in like a survival state and the, the chemicals that our body produces and then you put it in that animal and then you you know put on top of it the other chemicals that are injecting in that yeah. animal uh it's just a, a double compounding negative yeah. and, and and you know it's like i i i actually post because uh one, there's three main questions we have to ask to every single thing that we consume uh, you know in terms of eating or just as stuff we use in our house or wear or whatever and it is what is it doing to our health what is it doing to the planet and what living entities will harm to produce this food that's mm -hmm. intelligence that's what human beings need to have we don't just blindly consume things nope. <laughs> and in that section i posted a whole thing about a, a, a person who worked in a slaughterhouse <clears throat> and, and what he witnessed and he's like these animals know they're gonna die they're fighting with every fiber of their being yep. to survive you know it's like they're see like just a horrible i i just couldn't you know when i got hip to this in uh, 80 and then finally made the the whole switch in 81 it was like i, I couldn't support uh this stuff anymore yeah. so uh once I knew the details, there's a film from Frederick Weissman. He made Titty Cut Follies, and then he did this movie, and I think it was 76, called Meat. And he's not even vegan or anything. It wasn't like an activist film. He just took you through the whole process. Mm -hmm. Like, the film opened up with, like, a close-up on a horse, and it was cold, and the steam was coming out of the horse's nostrils, right? Mm -hmm. And then he pulls back, you see there's a cowboy on the horse. He pulls back further, there's other cowboys on other horses. He pulls back further, they're herding cows into the trucks to the slaughterhouse, you oh, know? Man. So, and it just took you through the whole process. And yeah. I'm like, you know, they don't want people to see this stuff. That's why they've actually passed legislature uh, that it's a felony to uh, film uh, these activities that's going on uh in slaughterhouses or any of this stuff mm -hmm. because like it would do damage to the industry just like 
the Texas beef industry when John, uh, Howard Lyman, who wrote The Mad Cowboy, was on Oprah, and mm -hmm. he told her exactly what they're feeding these cows, how they're treated, and she said, I'll never eat another hamburger as long as I live. Right. Well, there was an uproar there, and mm -hmm. I think, I don't forget how many millions of dollars she had to spend uh, in lawyer fees down there, <laughs> but, you know, you yeah. can't say anything, um, especially person of her stature as far as uh you know her ability to you know people just do whatever she says yeah and unfortunately now she's rebranded weight watches into ww and she's fucking selling this poison mm -hmm. uh you know they're the like so many people are consuming this crap right uh because this calorie restriction stuff it, you know, you lose weight at what cost, you know, yeah. skinny people get cancer and heart, heart attacks as well. So, mm -hmm. I mean, well, you, yeah, you look at like Bob Harper. I mean, one of the fittest guys in the world or whatever, but look what he was eating. I mean, look yeah, what he's putting his but, body. But, but here's the deal with him. I met him at Angelica Kitchen when he was mm -hmm. plant-based. He was right. plant-based. He don't tell people this shit. See, this oh, is really? the devil's in the details. That motherfucker was plant-based, really? right? He went back to eating fucking meat, making all the excuses that all these fucking Mama Luke celebrities make, just mm -hmm. like, you know, whatever. Right. And um, and he got his heart attack after he went back to eating meat. Oh man. Okay. That's yeah. it. you don't see you don't see him saying that shit. Now <laughs> he's on advertising fucking, you know, drugs to stop uh, platelets from building up to produce. Yeah. Like, dude. Just fucking stay plant based. It's yeah. it's it's a proven fact. The only the only diet on the planet to not only prevent but actually reverse heart disease is a whole food plant based diet. That yeah. has been proven scientifically, medically. The evidence is fucking there. Yeah. But people, this is a pill society. Yeah. What we have is not health care. We have sick care. Mm -hmm. They have violated the Hippocrat the Hippocratic oath to do no harm. These doctors. Mm -hmm. And I just tell people, ask that motherfucking doctor what he had or she had to eat the whole last week, everything, yeah. every meal. And, and therein lies the problem. They yeah. get two hours of nutritional training in the eight years it takes them to become a doctor. Yeah. Two hours. Wow. That's, because that's this crazy. whole system of medicine is not based, it's based on treating, is masking symptoms with pills. Yeah. Yeah. See, you know, nobody's going to tell me shit because I've been I've been researching this for 40 years now and watching what's going on, watching, mm -hmm. you know, all the stuff that's gone on uh, with the the uh, chemical companies producing this shit and then getting into pharmaceuticals and, yeah. and just the, uh, the whole issue that's that's going down. So this next book, you know, I got two books coming out. Um, and one of them is, is uh, about this whole issue. Everything A to Z, how to do plant-based the right way, what to watch out for, preventative, actual preventative medicines. Uh, and then I have a cookbook uh, to follow up uh, with that because Ooh. like, you know, and it tells people, how do you eat this in a food desert? Everyone says, oh, it's so expensive to do this. No, it ain't. If you know what you're doing, you know, there's a, there's, if you go on the forksoverknives.com, yeah. there's a section how to do plant-based for five bucks a day, man. So yeah. like people, you know. Yeah. No, it's, it's amazing that you even say that just because like, you know, six months ago, I was probably 20 plus pounds overweight, uh, taking four pills for anxiety, depression, just totally. And I was like, fuck, dude, I can't live like this. I don't want to live like this. And, it's and so. quality of life. Yeah. And so ironically, you know, I, I picked up ritual, you know, finding ultra and Amazing. he led, yeah, he led me to you and really the PMA effect just really that changed my life. And I, ironically, I, I read PMA first and then I went to meet for pussies and I wish, wow. you know, well, that's but, cool. Um, you know, there's, yeah. there's a, you know, it just, it just solidifies like everything everybody's saying. It's a mindset and diet and all this mm -hmm. stuff is tied in because yeah. I just said, you know, somebody just accused me, oh, you're fucking doom and gloom. And I had to say <laughs> yesterday, I go, look, man, what you don't understand is by me hipping you to this shit of this, of this roundup and this glyphosate and all this other stuff, what I'm actually doing is preventing you from becoming unhappy and miserable. It's actually 
because when you consume all this stuff, your health is going to go in the fucking toilet. And yeah. I'm sorry, I've yeah. seen people take their lives from being unhealthy and just throwing their hands up and giving up. But yep. there's hope for motherfuckers. And that's, that's what I try to tell people is like, yeah. look, man, it's not doom and gloom. It's actually a way to, to bring happiness to your life because everything is, is about health. If you don't have health, you don't have anything. There's, yeah. Yeah. there's a lot of very wealthy people that are dying of disease mm -hmm. because of their lifestyle and what they're choosing to do. Yeah. Money doesn't buy you your health education and knowledge and application of that knowledge is what helps us to become healthier and i just have my friend hoya he's um the bass player i'm i'm writing this whole thing yesterday about this exact issue in the book because i'm going through getting it ready for the editor and he texts me and he goes yo i'm paying attention to what you're doing and he sends me a text message of a photo of all this fucking like organic food mm -hmm. and i'm like and then he lost a hundred pounds. Wow. You know, and, and, and he has uh, sleep apnea and all this stuff from being overweight, but now he's like getting off, you know, the, the, the results are there just like with you, you know, you, 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 you can get off these meds, the, you know, this, this, the, you have to understand something, man. This is a fucking, this is a never ending fucking cycle. You're, you're on a fucking, you're on a, a fucking hamster wheel with this shit that you're never going to get off because once they get you on, on one drug, then it's another drug and another yep. drug and another drug. Just like all the research now with, with Dr. Uh, Esselstyn uh, is proving that actually Alzheimer's and the rest of these neurological problems that arise are coming from the body giving off thousands and thousands of, of, of mini strokes on the yeah. brain because of what we're eating. Mm -hmm. So, you know, then, you know, people get Alzheimer's or Parkinson's and then they have to start taking all these drugs and those drugs lead to depression. Then they're going to give you depression pills and yep. all this stuff. It's like, dude, stop the fucking, remember that woman? Stop the insanity. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I was just like, man, have you been sitting in on my, my, uh, my doctor's like, you know, waiting room? Because like, seriously, like, well, hey, you know, it's just amazing the, the, what you can get from your doctor. Like, hey, let's try this. Let's do this. You know, I felt like, like not only a, a hamster on the wheel, right? But I felt like a guinea pig, like, well, yeah, fuck, I don't you know if this is going to work, pig. you know? Yeah. And so, and, and like you said in your book, like, you know, you, your body responds differently to different chemicals and different pills. And, and, and so, yeah. you know, and I was like, why would I want to put this toxic stuff in me? And why not much like in the forks of our knives when they were talking about, you know, reversing the coronary artery disease and whatnot, yeah. and how, how the plant base was helping instead of putting the stint into the heart, you know, valves or heart arteries, it was re repairing it through eating. I was like, that's magic. What did, he, what did he, 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 Dr. Esselstyn said, you know, people, Caldwell Esselstyn said, people think it, it, this is a, you know, this is, this is such a, a radical thing, but he's like, what's more radical than like cracking your chest open oh. like a walnut and taking a vein out of your leg and sewing it into, into your heart for bypass surgery. And I'll tell you something else too. This is another thing you have to you know, there was a great book because like I've researched this shit for years. There was a, and um, there was a, a, a great book that came out, um, Confessions of an Rx Drug Pusher. Um, just blanking on uh, who wrote it. It was a woman who wrote it. She was a big, huge pharmaceutical rep. And then her, her niece uh, took her life from these medications she was on and she came out against them. Well, she she proved that these these doctors are getting paid to fucking these doctors are getting paid to describe to prescribe these medications. As a matter of fact, Umera, which is the number one drug right now sold in the world, mm -hmm. and I just went down the rabbit hole on Umera and who and who makes it. These companies, it all traces back to chemical companies who put these things out that ruin our gut health when gut health as Dr. Zach Bush proved on the rich roll podcast, when you destroy, when you destroy the gut biome, yeah, every yeah. fucking thing else stems from that. So here you have these fucking dangerous chemicals and pesticides getting released 
eating it into your fucking food. And then it's causing all these issues. And then they turn around with their subsidiary, this other company, because the company that makes uh, Umero was once owned by BASF, which is a German fucking chemical company, right? Mm -hmm. You make yeah. all these poison chemicals. So Umera got sued because they they had doctors over prescribing um, fucking Umera, paying them to do so in California. Right. They actually made twenty billion dollars last year off Umera, and guess how much they settled nice. the lawsuits for? Mm. Twenty million. Oh so wow! There you go. That's the game being played. Right. Okay. It's it's you put and, and think about when something says FDA approved, what the fuck that means. That does not mean shit because look at all the drugs that were put out there by the FDA, right? FDA yeah. approved to be recalled. And what does the pharmaceutical companies do? They make billions of dollars and then they settle for pennies on the dollar. So that's mm -hmm. the game being played, and we're the suckers. Yeah. Like P.T. Barnum said, there's a sucker born every minute and two to take them. In this case, there's a sucker born every minute and there's 10 fucking pharmaceutical companies to take them. Yeah, it'd be you interesting know? to see the, 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 the amount of money that is being spent and made and then the amount of lives that correlates with that. You know what I mean? Dude, this is the real global pandemic. People yeah. don't understand this. Yeah. They're talking, uh, listen, no disrespect to the hundred and some odd thousand lives that were lost due to COVID in the United States this year. But guess what? Can't even come close to the amount of people that died from heart disease yeah. or yeah. fucking type two diabetes or mm -hmm. any of these other diseases that are fucking life and food choice driven disease. Yeah. yeah. Well, even and a lot of these cancers. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty interesting too. Like the correlation with you know Tyson and and the food industry with like you know even you know Susan Komen and her run for cancer. Oh, dude, and all that. pink I'm washing, like... pink washing. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> yeah. dude, I talked about that in in media some pussies, and yep. people don't even have a clue to the shit nope. that's going on. I was like, wow, I want to go in there and 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 run it and just like you know. There's Just, a great there's a great documentary called The Idiot Cycle, and I suggest that everybody that fucking is wa listening to this go watch that fucking movie, man, because it's the cancer fucking hustle. They ain't never gonna cure cancer, Biden. Oh, we're gonna cure cancer, oh, and I become president. You ain't curing shit, homie, because cancer is a fucking business. Yep. And why would they possibly cure one of the biggest profiting fucking sicknesses in the fucking history of the world? But the cancer cure is there. It's yeah. not contained in fucking chemo and all the rest of the shit that they're poisoning people with. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if I got cancer, I would never take that shit. I would go to Hippocrates Health Center or one of these places and fast and get plenty of sun. And hey, man, if I'm going to die, which we all are going to fucking die, nobody's right. going to live forever. But at least let me go out with some dignity and quality of fucking life. Not not yeah. I've, I've seen people die from chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. My uncle was one of them. Yep. He just died last year. Uh, Vietnam veteran. And, you know, fucking, it was horrible what the yeah. fuck they did to him, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, yeah. sadly, you have people who take it serious and make that switch and say, hey, you know, I'm going to give this a try. Yeah. You know, yeah. In my friend's case, the doctor said it's an inoperable brain tumor. There's nothing we can do. So when he went down the rabbit hole and, and, and uh, you know, started doing his research man it worked for him i'm not saying that's going to work for everybody but yeah you know. yeah and i think that that's the main key you just got to kind of tinker with it and go from there you know i lost yeah uh my, my stepdad same thing he he had well my my stepdad and my my mom both passed away from cancer but mostly it was due from smoking or whatever so yeah. uh but it was interesting that when my stepdad was going through his chemo like he was so warped like he didn't know what was reality or what was not and that was really kind of like he honestly You're looked at me and said, "Lying your fucking yeah, brain, yeah, he, he, literally he looked, baking your fucking brain." Yeah, yeah. Like they have, they they came out with this whole thing that's a refrigerated helmet that you wear on your fucking brain when you're getting chemo and radiation, 
afterwards yeah. because your brain is being fucking cooked. Yeah, yeah. He looked at me and he was like, Michael, I don't know if I'm in like another dimension or another world. And, and I mean, it was on an honest question. And we were, you know, a couple it's feet sad, away. And it was like, it is. I'm and so, you know. Right now, with the way in 40, in 40 years, 30 years, they're going to look at the, how they treated fucking people for disease nowadays and they're going to be like holy shit what a barbaric fucking system of medicine it's a slaughter and the fact of the matter is who is controlling government policy for all of this stuff yeah. and it's the pharmaceutical companies the pharmaceutical companies those india uh, industries and lobbyists are the most powerful fucking lobbyists in the united states of america yeah they're controlling yeah. this fucking government and you just yeah. see by the fucking reaction to covid what's going down i'm yeah. sorry i watched the news dr fauci takes fifteen thousand milligrams i believe he said you know before this whole thing uh, uh, to to help strengthen his immune system mm -hmm. i watched the news consecutively for the last six months. I did not see one single doctor or healthcare professional who was on mainstream media say, hey, keep your immune system strong. Wow. It's like talking about the immune system became a fucking conspiracy theory in yeah. 2020. There's no, there's, so so what do you do? They, they told everybody the exact opposite of what you should be doing. They didn't yeah. talk about diet. They said, stay inside, wear a mask, do this, do that. Yep. Watch TV nonstop, nonstop, stress, 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 producing <laughs> cortisol, which breaks down your immune system. It's mm -hmm. like, I did the exact opposite. I went outside in the fucking sun. I got vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I strengthened my immune system by uptaking uh, zinc and vitamin C. I ate more raw foods and juices. Mm -hmm. I didn't wear a mask outside because I socially distanced. I stayed, I did their six feet thing, whoever the hell came up with that. What, it's not six feet, six inches, it's, <laughs> it's, it's six. Yeah. I, did, I did all of that. You know what? And uh, sorry, but I helped build and strengthen my immune system. I took I took oregano oil. I took, you know, uh, herbs, turmeric, zinc. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not uh, zinc. Uh, turmeric, ginger, all this stuff to help. But 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 here's the thing. Uh, you know, the immune system's like a muscle, right? So yeah. what do you do when you go to the gym? You fucking work out. You build the muscle so that when you need that bicep to fucking pull down something or you need that shoulder to push something up or your back muscles it's there mm -hmm. so the immune system is like a muscle yeah. you have to let it you have to let it do its job that's what it's there to do yeah and now that you know the 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 you know what what they're saying now is like most of these cases even of the covid stuff which i don't want to get into nope different podcast <laughs> you know, too deep here but like it, it, it was it, it was people with pre-existing conditions and the elderly and, and all this stuff but you know that's why I don't take any flu shots or any of that stuff I let I let my immune system do the job that I'm paying it to do yeah. I'm paying my immune system by all of the meditation the internal work the good food I avoid drugs alcohol smoking all of that I, I avoid dealing with shitty people mm -hmm. you know uh, you have to anyway. You live yeah. in New York. But, <laughs> Doesn't uh, matter. You're gonna run into that. Give them a verbal fucking slap and send them on yep. their fucking way. You know, Take 20 years ago they would have got beat down, but I can't right. be like that anymore. Point is, I'm investing in my immune system. Yeah. So yeah. That's what I do. No, and I, I think there's some truth on that. Like, what was it? There's like 75% of your uh, serotonin to help with, you know, depression is in the stomach and just activating the stomach is, is the exactly. trick, right? And then 85% of your immune system is in the stomach, again, getting it active. And, and I've actually read up uh, following with, you know, um, you know, the four, four laws or the four rules. Um, what was that book? Uh, four. Uh, yes. And so, you know, going through meditation and the chakras and everything and activating your body that way, I mean, has been just a, a and I'm still going through it. And it's just been a mind changing, you know, well, you, know it, 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 you know, they even started implementing in some of the more woke hospitals that actually feed patients plant based diets to help heal after surgery they also get them to do some quiet meditation time because it's been proven to speed up the healing process wow. so yeah. you know this stuff's been around for, for 
for thousands of years. It's yeah. just, you know, all of these problems that we're having started at the dawn of the industrial revolution, because look what we did to the food, look what we did to everything. We, we thought the answers was in machines. The answers, machines are there to help us, but they're not the answer. They can yeah. help us. Yeah. You know, like we're talking on Zoom right now. That's a great yeah. fucking thing, dude. This yeah. is going to go out and, and, and uh, you know, and reach people and stuff like that. But those machines can also be, they can be machines created to do destructive fucking things too, yeah. man. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. Well, let's, uh, let's switch it over to PMA effect. Um, you know, uh, I can't tell you how grateful I am to read that book. And I, you know, I, I listened to the audio book and I, I listen, oh, I'm, yeah. st I'm, I'm still listening to it. And, um, you know, I, I'm listening to it for the second time, just because I'm going back and getting a whole different perspective because of the rabbit hole, the depression, suicidal place that I was at. And, you know, well, thank God, thank God you worked through that, man. And you're here and, you know, you look peaceful. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, well, you, so, have a, you have a glow in your eyes and what you see now is people, they're so sullen and, and, and f devoid of life. Like, you know, yeah. it, it doesn't have to be that way, man. No, no. And that, and that that's where I, you know, uh, a lot of the, you know, the semicolon project and, and suicide, you know, where awareness is what I'm really about. I work in the healthcare profession. So, you know, for mental health and, and students with uh, addiction and mental health issues. So. Uh, very That's passionate. Awesome. Yeah, very passionate about what I, what I do. And, and, but, you know, the PMA effect, you know, I, I just started running uh, again, and, you know, getting my times up and, and working my way and, and getting off of medicines and, and introducing more healthier foods and, and sleep. Yeah, uh, you know, I never would have thought I would be like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm not getting up at five in the morning. I'm like, no way, I, I'm I'm sleeping in. You know, I used to say, you know, getting up at five in the morning was for sleeping, farting, and dreaming. That was it. And I was like, but you know, thanks to you to show me like getting up, being productive, having a a mission, a purpose, and and redefining every yourself every day. Every day, look, I tell yeah. I tell you, man, look, all my shit is written down, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Like yeah. I got my board right here. I know, I know what, I, yep. but, yep. but I mean, let's just look at Rich Roll's story, right? Yeah. You know, the, the, the fucking Finding Ultra, just mm -hmm. read that book and, and what he, you know, there's a guy, he's a lawyer, he's fucking making all this money. He's fucking, yep. you know, living the fucking American dream. But is it really, he was living the American nightmare because yeah. he had a fucking heart attack, basically walking up a flight of fucking stairs. And yeah. Yep. Went from being a, a collegiate swimmer to like this fat fucking dude, you know, who um, I got, what did he call it? The pull up diet. If you uh, the window, Win window, diet. Food, if window, you diet, yeah. yep. window, he yep. fucking ate. And this is, yeah. you know, listen, man, I got 40 years of traveling across the fucking globe with my band and speaking engagements and all the rest of the shit training and Ironmans and stuff that I do all over the world traveling. And, and, and I, this is happening everywhere. It doesn't have to be like this. Mm -hmm. You're an example. I'm an example. Rich Roll's an example. We can overcome all this stuff. Yeah. And, and mental health is, you know, that's why I wrote the PMA effect because people just kept saying to me, Hey man, I was giving out so much advice on the daily. Somebody's like, yo, you should compile all this shit in a book. And sadly, I can't remember who the fuck told me to do that. But thank you very much for the person <laughs> because it inspired me. I started writing down the lessons that I've learned. And like I said, I ain't no rocket scientist. I didn't come up with this shit. Like, but what I did was I learned from very wise men and women Mm -hmm. by their example and that's to me example like my spiritual teacher Prabhupada said examples better than precept all you have these days is people talking shit all over the internet and mm -hmm. fucking social media I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that bragging this that fuck all that lip service man I look to see what people do how they treat other people how they in yeah. fact live their lives yep. those are the examples that I mm -hmm. want to see you know, I got a good buddy who's a Navy SEAL. And what do they say? The best leaders lead from the front. Yeah. They're fucking, they're, they're setting the example for everybody. And that's, yep. that's what we need nowadays is mm -hmm. people that set the example. And that's, 
to me, I was like, the, the book was, was very important to write. Cause like I said, I'm not cured of all my fucking shit. I'm just in remission right now. I'm a work in progress. Right. But every day I wake up, I beat the enemy mind with a stick. Yep. And you know, and, and I get after it every single day, you know, Rich Roll just had, uh, I forget who it was. Uh, uh, he had some doctor on there and, and they discussed that mood follows action. Yeah. It's not that you're in the right mood and then you take, that's bullshit. The, you take action and the mood follows. People yeah. have it reversed. They're waiting yeah. for the golden moment. The golden <laughs> moment don't fucking happen. It's not going to come slap you in the face, that's for sure. You know, yeah, you I know. Gotta, you got to get after it on yeah. the daily. Yeah. There's so many great, like, little chapters, Wake Your Best Wolf and all this rest yeah. of this shit that I use these analogies of wolves or, yeah. Yeah. you know, how the... Uh, they, they get up hungry, man. And, you know, yeah, yeah, no, that, miles to find a meal. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like if you're not, you're not seeking, you know, not necessarily seek and destroy, but you're not trying your best. And, and I, I agree with you being, you know, the best person I can be for today. I'm, I'm in the moment today. I'm in the present right now. I'm, I'm enjoying this, this conversation. I'm learning and I can't wait to give yeah. my experiences to the next person. So that way I can pay it forward to help the other person or the next person. But um, I do from the bottom of my heart, want to say thank you so much for your, your PMA effect. It, it is oh, uh, thank you, man. just, well, uh, you know, I, changed. I, I as you can see, I sit here with, with the book right here and fucking crack it. I go like this and I just open it up and then it's like, you can't expect overnight success because it doesn't work that way. We are so hard headed and stuck in our ways. Our conditioning runs so deep that it just takes time to change, perhaps even an entire lifetime. So it like, is. You today's know, mantra. Today's I mantra. Game. I just open it up. I'm like, all right, what is it today? Maybe it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Maybe it's somebody, yeah. you know, David Goggins talking about don't, don't, you know, don't have poopy pants and kick rocks. Be stay hard, motherfucker. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you know, there's so many amazing people out there now that yes. are just doing amazing things. And to me, it's those who put themselves out there and make themselves vulnerable in order to help other people. And yeah. uh, that they're, they're the real rock stars. Yeah. And I, and I think that's what I've kind of learned from you. And I, you know, I, I just, even this podcast, just like, Hey man, I'm putting this out. I don't, I don't I'll throw my balls on the table and say, Hey, can you come join me for, you know, half hour, 45 minutes of your time? Yeah. And just, uh, I want to, I want to hear your story. I want to, I want to connect with you. I want to, I want to learn from you. And that's the one thing I've definitely learned from you is, and, and I, I admire you because like I said, somebody calls you a vegan, you correct them right then and there. No. And then you explain. And I, and I like that because most people will be like, you know, forget you and I'm done. Right. But you know, you take the time to say, you know what, you know, I'm not vegan. I'm, I'm plant-based and let me tell you why. And, and that's what well, people see, need to have. See, see, here's the thing though, is that I follow all the tenets of that. I don't, every single thing that I do in my life technically is vegan. I just refuse right. to call myself that. Yeah. And uh, you know, you know, the, it, it's, uh, it's just for certain, for certain reasons and whatever, yeah. but, um, no. And I, and I, like I said, it's, uh, I, I got my, my kid, my, my 12 year old son reading the PMA effect and, and, nice. uh, you know, and it's like, dude, if you want to learn anything in life, here's the chapter book right here. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, moving on to your, you know, your tours and Iron Man's, I mean, how's, how's music going? How, how's that life? I mean, how's that I mean, affected you? Know, you? Everything was canceled, obviously, right. um, you know, because of, uh, this uh, COVID thing and, um, my tours were canceled. Uh, my races were all canceled this year. Uh, you know, but, but here's the thing. Uh, I didn't let that, um, you know, spin me into a, a mental hell. I just right. kept busy and okay, this is what it is. We have to accept things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the situation is. Yep. I'm not going to fucking bug out. Let me yeah. take that same energy mm -hmm. and apply it to other things. So I got both my books done. I'm writing a new album. Nice. Nice. Uh, I still train. I actually did a a week long training camp in Jamaica. I went down there. I was putting in like fucking five mile swims, 20 mile runs wow. every fucking day and good for you. Uh, eating good and doing whatever. So like, um, 
you know, you got to work with uh, where you're at and what's available and, uh, you know, sure. see what happens, you know, for, for next year as far as the racing. And, you know, I don't put all my eggs in one basket, so to speak, because like, there's so many people that were like, everything to them is Iron Man and if I can't race. <laughs> right, right. That's not me. I got all this other shit going on. So right. it's like. I don't know how you do it, man. I don't know how you do it. it you're, you're well, just. You know, you, like, I'm like you. I get up early animal. and I work hard all day. And, uh, right. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually in school now to become a life coach. So I have classes nice. fucking for the next eight weeks. Sweet. And I'm Congrats. becoming a certified uh, life coach just because, like, you know, I, I technically, I, I, I'm already doing it, uh, and I could start. Yeah, you know, dude, I'll sign up. Kind of hustle and and get yeah. another side hustle, but the yeah. the the uh, being accredited to to do that is sure. is important sure. because anybody could say, yeah, I'm a trainer, but my girl is NASM, <clears throat> she's National Academy of Sports Medicine, so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, you have to have the certification to really be taken serious in yeah. serious circles you know yep. Be, yep. you know yeah. so so i'm doing that i'm working on a new album uh, i'm still training i'm gonna run a fucking 10k and go to the gym when i get off uh off of this mm -hmm. and uh i i just allocated that same time uh to doing other things and staying positive increased meditation and you know cooking yeah. at home which yeah. saved me a ton of money because when all the restaurants were open, my girl was like, do you understand how much money you spend going out? And yeah. then like, I would take that a hunt. Like I would spend $50 and then like you, you spend that $50 and you could eat three meals of organic food for two people yep. fucking for the entire day. Yep. So, yep. you know, I just, like I said, uh, one of the, Thing, statements I kept making was that if you didn't get your shit done during this time, you didn't have a lack of time. You had a lack of discipline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you weren't disciplined enough. You know, you're out there, you know, fucking arguing politics or wearing masks or all this shit. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit, man. Like I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with what I have control over and what right. I have control over is my mental health, my physical health, Mm -hmm. how I treat other people, what I'm doing for my life. And that's, that's what I focused on since March because New York was the epicenter of the fucking globe with this shit. It was like a ghost town. It was, fucking, it was fucking insane. Eerie. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so that's where it's at, you know, that's, yeah. that's, uh, you know what I'm doing. So nice. Not, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a, I signed up for, we have a, a race called the bogus 50, 50, which is a 50 K 50 miler. And you know, they're all kind of up in the air and you know, I'm like, I'm still training. I'm, I'm segmenting yeah. my stuff. And, and like, even if it doesn't, I've done so many virtual stuff. Like I don't, yeah. I'm just going to go get my miles in. I, I got my That's goal it. for my, my miles for the week and trying to get, you know, 140 for the, the month and, you know, throwing Amazing. in a, thrown in the bike and whatnot and so enough, yeah you're in boise right yeah yeah, yeah. so and they just sent me the registration for Coeur d'Alene and i'm like fucking for the <laughs> iron man oh yeah nice yeah, yeah. beautiful place up there very very, very yeah nice, i know so. but uh <clears throat> you know i already <laughs> i had all my races deferred so i got i got placid i got next year i got uh where else placid and maryland ironman wow. I, i'm kind of i try to do three of them so you know we'll see cool. what the other race will be nice nice so yeah i wanted to kind of switch gears going to the food um and the sobriety part uh you know uh, interesting on that when, when you and uh i believe another gentleman were on the ritual podcast you guys were talking about sobriety Mishka. yeah and so i'm horrible with names man i apologize but uh you know um it was interesting to hear you guys kind of came from a different perspective of sobriety. I'm 65 days sober because I was just like, I can't do this anymore. This stuff is just, it's, it's an emotional killer. It's a motivational killer. It's a spiritual killer. And, and those are the things that have really evolved from that. But I wanted to kind of, you know, just get your, your perspective because the other guy was pretty against the, and I don't want to say against, but he just didn't understand that, you know, the, the 12 steps, which I don't think, I'm on that. I mean, I have a little bit of that, yeah. but I, you know, that's not for everybody. Everybody, right. 
you know, everybody has their path. He wasn't, you know, Mishka wasn't for it. Rich Roll was. I, right. I didn't. I didn't get clean and sober that way. I did it through intense internal work on myself as chanting <laughs> meditation. And I, I mean, I, I, I honestly believe I came out of a worse situation, but then both of those two combined because exactly. Yes, agreed. You know, agreed. Agreed. Like, I wasn't a drunk who destroyed myself. I was a fucking violent, crackhead, pillhead, drinker who was robbing dangerous drug dealers, getting fucking shot at. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. every fucking day, I was, my, my life was at risk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, uh, you know, in the Vedic teachings, it says that, uh, you know, the, the, the four negative principles destroy the four positive principles. Uh, pillars of spiritual life or or, or awareness and mm -hmm. uh you know meat eating destroys compassion yeah and empathy uh, intoxication destroys austerity right and mm. what is austerity we undertake a hardship to achieve a higher result right the people that are getting fucked up constantly they don't have that quality of like determination and just drive and motivation yeah. and I, I i'm not saying it as somebody at a pulpit i'm saying i i recognized it for myself the only yeah. thing i cared about was getting that next fucking hit of crack or yeah. Yeah. you know whatever the fuck so yeah for uh, me it was yeah. it was a uh, it was you know alcohol and i in one yeah. drop to a little bit and and you know um that motivational, that resilience is what, you know, I kind of, I've learned and, and it's, it's amazing. And I don't know if you want to touch up on this, but I, I'm more than willing. I had a, an epiphany. I was listening to the rich role, you know, ultra uh, finding ultra on Saturday. And he was talking about how his, his mom and dad were disappointed when he crossed the, uh, was his graduation and he went barefoot. Right. And it literally stopped me in my tracks. And I thought about my mom because I lost her five years ago. Right. And like, she wasn't at my graduation. So that whole thing, you know, those perspectives and those life moments before for me would have been like, eh. now it's like, Oh my gosh. You know, like it, it just, it just made it an, an epiphany and it made me feel like the sense of my emotions, a uh, sense of my, my spirituality and, and a sense of where I'm at and the grit and the re resilience and the perseverance that I'm, I'm, I'm thriving and driving on. And it was just a really ho-hum moment. And I shared, uh, I shared that with my, one of my best friends and, uh, Jake Reynolds. And, um, you know, I called him at five in the morning. He's like, what the fuck you calling me at five in the morning? And I'm all like, dude, ah! you know, I'm, I'm just like sobbing. I'm, I'm crying my eyes out. Right. And, um, he's like, what's wrong? Are you being attacked or something? I was like, no, I'm, 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 I miss my mom. And, and, you know, I had this, this epiphany of what was going on and, and, but, before I just would have just washed it away. And before I would have just, I'm just going to go drink myself and forget yeah. about it. Right. And mask it. And so, um, you know, I'm not, not looking to do that anymore. So, but, uh, well, yeah, you know, that's, that's the whole thing. Like I, my brothers and now, you know, my younger brother, you know, we, we went through real bad things in, in a foster home for six years and, yeah. you know, I dealt with it. My older brother dealt with it. My younger brother chooses to mask that with, uh, drugs and alcohol and he's had you know 10 near-death experiences he's been in comas for months he just continue you know he just continues to use yeah. to mask the pain that's there and, yeah. and uh, yeah, I mean I did the same I did the same thing you know for years and years and years yeah all the way back to the 70s of being on the streets and then you know all the rest of the stuff and even had this this like so-called woke period from like 81 all the way to you know 88 where i was like doing all this positive stuff and then it just took one situation actually in 87 and i i went off the fucking rails because yeah. it opened up all those old wounds that were there and all the enemy mind needs is a crack in the armor man and then it just fucking it yeah. implores its fucking soldiers to fucking just destroy you fucking dirty man yeah. and that, just destroys and, you and, yeah. and, and, uh, and that's yeah. what happens so like you yeah. know the, the thing i'd say intoxication is like hey man i can bet more than likely that if you go out and get hammered on wednesday night and you're supposed to run thursday morning that fucking run's not going to happen and if it does 
it's going to be complete shit. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and so austerity means we have to invest our time, our energy, everything into something to achieve something that's better than where we're at right now. Sure. That's what yeah. yoga is all about. That's yeah. what meditation, that's what the spiritual process, that's what investing in our health, in yeah. our mental health, our physical health, yeah. making better communities, better families. All of this stuff requires austerity on our part. Yeah. The problem is we live in a microwave society <laughs> where people expect immediate results. I want to be overnight famous on fucking YouTube or, with, or this or that. And a lot of the younger generation, and I'm sure they're going to be like, oh, yeah, look at this fucking boomer. I'm like, yeah, I'm a, you know what my comment is now? My, my rebuttal? I'm a boomer that could fucking out train you, out fucking work you, and you're fucking half of my age. You should be ashamed of yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this yep. boomer can fucking run you into the fucking ground on a daily yep. basis. Yep. You should be kicking my fucking ass. Yeah. But the problem is everybody is expecting immediate results these days. They don't yeah. want to invest the time, the effort, the energy, the money, whatever, into becoming better things. You know, it, like I just read, read you the quote. It could yeah. take, it takes a lifetime. But John, that, that's so much work. Why would I want to put that much work into it when I can just, you know, take that shortcuts? And that's the key point right there, taking those shortcuts. And these kids, you know, I, I work with them in those my... Shortcuts, Go to those shortcuts end at a dead end road, man. Yep. Thank like, you. You know, you think, yep. you know, I got it's a true. story once we were on tour and we were fucking playing. It was about 20 years ago. We were playing up in Vermont and it was winter time and it was a fucked up night. We played the gig and then it started sleeting and snowing and really bad. And I told right. the fucking driver, I said, listen, man, stay on the fucking main highway, dude. Do not get off this highway. Right. So you know what he did while we were asleep? He went off because the, the other road took, uh, you know, took, it, it, it was like 45 minutes less time, what he considered a shortcut. <laughs> well, guess what? They didn't de-ice that road, and we hit black ice. Oh, the van no. went off the fucking road, down a ravine, flipped eight times, crushed the fucking van. Everybody got hurt. Oh, jeez. And I'm like, dude, what are we doing on this road? Oh, yeah. man, I tried to save 45 minutes fucking time. So there you go with your fucking shortcuts. Yeah, yep, yep. Well, um, I know we're running out of time, but I want to, I want to, I want to, you know, validate and kind of get this going. I want to get, after we scaffold up, you know, I wanted people kind of get an idea who you are and, and kind of talk a little bit more, but let's, let's get into the human trafficking and, and the child trafficking and, and, you know, the biggest thing that, you know, I've been reading and how grotesque this is and just how silent this, this, you know, this is horrible. This is awful. It's, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible. Right now there's 800. I'm working with our rescue, Tim Ballard, not we're working with them, but um, I've been following him and, and uh, working to get the word out. Right. Uh, Tim Ballard was a CIA officer and yep. Homeland security, whatever. And they weren't allocating him the time to do this. So he actually gave up his position and if you go out rescue or follow yes. him, he hires, yep. as a matter of fact, he hires one of my buddy who's in the SEALs right now is going to go volunteer. He has all special forces guys and, that, and law enforcement that work with him. They go around the world, work with the local governments, capture these fucking monsters that are, he just did one raid in, in the Caribbean and they had like nine year old children chained to beds. Wow. And uh, it's just fucking like he frees them up and he uses seals and green berets and just bad motherfuckers to do this shit. And because, you know, these people, this is this is a this is billions and billions and billions of dollars being made. It's the, the it, annual it's profit is 100, 150 billion. Yeah. Annual so profit generated with, from this forced up, labor. It's up there with fucking drug trafficking. So, yeah. I mean, um. So I've been paying attention to this, not only because of what the abuse I suffered as a child at the hands of older people, but also, uh, you know, this woman uh, who used to go to this bhakti yoga temple ashram with me uh, had two daughters and they were trafficked to Jeffrey Epstein's Island, mm -hmm. uh, you know, by this woman, Maxwell, who, 
you know, they would groom these kids using women and say they're going to go to this prestigious school. It's all going to be paid for. They have chaperones. They keep the boys separate from the women. College is going to be paid for, grants, computers, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they went down there and guess what? The, you know, they looked for single mothers. They got her out of the ballet school in New York. And oh. they looked for single parents or kids that have family problems and, and they focused in on them. Uh -huh. uh, and that's what they did. You know, she's a single mother trying to raise two kids. And, you know, basically uh, she made custom jewelry that she sold in the streets in Soho. She had a table and she she made enough everything went to her children to the ballet mm -hmm. school to whatever yeah. Yeah. so like you know to hear like oh wow they're gonna do and and some of the you know the scientists from all over the world come to this to this school and talking about global warming and it's just a, an amazing education they're going to receive well they went down there and they fucking disappeared for almost seven years oh geez and one of them was coming out of Prince Philip's apartment, that photo that ended up on the sun the, or the UK mirror or whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. That was her fucking daughter at 16 years old. They were trafficking, they, they trafficked these kids to dignitaries and flew them on private planes all over the fucking world and drugged these kids and, yeah. and brainwashed these kids. She had a nervous breakdown because she's like, I remember when it was happening. She's like, my kids won't talk to me anymore. I don't yeah. know what's going on and all this stuff. And it was like, you know, it was a horrible situation. So yeah. to me, I, I got skin in the game, man, you know, so yeah. I'm like, you know, what's good, you know, and it's, it's, it's being, it's being, you're not seeing these stories. They just got like, I think 34 children were rescued in, in Georgia and all this stuff. The media does not, you know, does not do any of this stuff yeah. on mainstream yeah. media. You know, you got to look on websites uh, for ABC News or whatever. They're not broadcasting these stories of, of, uh, of this horrible stuff. And there's been people in Hollywood that have been saying this for years, that pedophile cults exist and all this stuff. Well, and didn't, didn't, got, and Corey, Corey Haim came out with it, didn't he? Corey Haim's dead. Corey, uh, what's the other guy? Uh, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know. friend, I'll tell you in a second. Cause yeah. I have his number. I'm actually friends with him. Cause he, uh, we did a vegan, uh, we did a vegan thing together in, uh, Corey Feldman. Feldman, there it is, yes. Yeah, and yeah. we did a vegan thing together at this dinner and had a discussion uh, in L.A. I don't know, this was probably, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago. And mm -hmm. you know, he saw the Crow Megs play before. So, he, he, you know, we, we, we became friends. And he's been trying to warn people about all this stuff that's going on for years. Yeah. I mean, I know there's also a lot of wild conspiracy theory shit out there too and whatever the fuck but right. i pay attention to what i know is going down and stories that are substantiated yeah uh, by hard evidence and uh there's no denying you know right now there's eight hundred thousand children missing in america i'm sure some of those are runaways but a lot of those are not a lot of those kids got fucking snatched man yeah well, just to read off a couple of stats, in 2012, there was 21 million victims trapped in modern day slavery, right? 68 were exploited for labor, 22 for sexually exploited, and then 10% were in state imposed forced labor. And just to blow your mind, I was driving home from my work yesterday and I was talking to a, a, a principal and he came across a, um, a, a couple that came in she was a freshman. She was getting enrolled to a, um, you know, high school and her husband. So mind you again, freshman husband was enrolling her into this. And he just kind of looked freshman at like in college or high school, high school, so high how school. Old was that? 15? So that's 15, 15 years old. So we have a 15 year old girl enrolling old into it. Uh, he was, uh, I want to say 25, 26. Yeah. So, you know, and, and it was really interesting when I was talking to him, I was like, so what'd you do? He goes, well, we, we kind of looked into it and, you know, it's, it's interesting to see, 
you know, and it's known some parts of the world where they, they, they marry off or whatever. And, and you, you talked about the mainstream media and even going back to like these, you know, first day mar marriage at first sight or whatever, you know, all these things, it's like these arranged marriages are just, it's just crazy. But, you know, going back to that, she was, she was 15, she was enrolling. Um, her husband was enrolling her into class and, and they just kind of talked a little bit about it, got the SR invo involved. And then the next day bugged out, gone. And I was just like, in fucking tiny little Idaho, we have this. And it's just, it's right under our noses. It's, every, it's happening. It's happening in New York, in big cities, small cities, everywhere, not just in America, but across the fucking globe. Like, yep. I Human urge trafficking. everybody to follow Tim Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D, yeah. our rescue. And, you know, because he's on the front lines of this shit. Yeah. And... He's tracking these fucking people down doing this. I mean, if you go on the web, on their website and everything, how many people were kids were rescued to this day? It's, mm -hmm. it's um, they're doing they're doing great work. They work with uh, local law enforcement to make it happen, and um, you got a lot of very skilled people with amazing skill sets, and they're utilizing those skill sets to do good. You know, my friend wants, my friend's a good person. Like, you know, he's done 20 years in the SEALs and he's like, I want to be able to take that skill set and use that and volunteer for something good. I'm, I'm always going to be able to get security work because everybody wants these guys as, you know, whether you're working, protecting a CEO going overseas or whatever, but he wants mm -hmm. to allocate some of his time to, helped Tim Ballard as well. And right. there's a lot of these guys that are doing this now. So it's a great, um, I got a 105 pound pit bull and I told him, listen, man, when you, if you ever need a dog to rip somebody's fucking face off, give me a call. Cause Bear, yeah. my dog well, Bear would gladly fucking do it. It's, 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 it's crazy. And like I said, just looking at some of these other stats, you know, 22,000 victims identified this, this in the last night, 2019, uh, you know, victims and survivors identified by trafficking from sex trafficking with 14,000. So it's just, it's, it's a 19 increase from the 2018 to 2019. It's just amazing. And, um, you know, the age it, that, that just grosses me out. And like, you know, as an educator, and that's what I'm, I want to get from you is what, what can we do? You know, regular Joe Schmo educator like me, I, I looked up, uh, I joined, you know, Youth for Human Rights, and I'm, I'm, I'm promoting that and trying to get, you know, uh, understanding and identifications and how to identify, you know, human trafficking and, and sex trafficking. But what are some other things that we can do as people to help these people that are trapped, that are, that I can't, don't, don't have any resources? I mean, you know, especially in rural parts, they have to move these kids around. So if you see, you know, you have to pay attention to, to your surroundings. That's why I really feel everybody walking around with earbuds in and fucking like, you know, we're losing sight of paying attention to a lot, yes. to a lot of these things that are going on around us. And that's, I don't, I don't ever walk around with or ride my bike or anything with like, you know, listening to music or, you know, not paying attention. I, I, I have a rule too when I walk down the streets because shit is getting ill yeah. in New York City. Yeah. I, I'm never walking down the street text messaging or any of that shit. I'm paying attention to my surroundings nonstop. Right. And I think if we just have more awareness to our surroundings of what's actually going on, who knows? We may We may witness something. We may witness a child looking distraught in a fucking car and something out of place. We just, you know, yeah. and, and I forgot the disease that they, the sin, the syndrome, they call it where the person actually identifies with the captor, uh, you know, but I want to say it was, wasn't it like forgotten identity syndrome or something like nah, that? There's, it was there's... something else like Patty, Patty, uh, what do you call it? The one who joined the, the uh, Patty Duke was it or whatever she joined oh. the fucking uh, terrorist organization and then like robbed banks with them and all that. She she claimed that, but uh, oh, okay, I forget what the syndrome's called, but uh, right. it's uh, 
not Patty Duke, I forget the name of the person. She was uh, very wealthy parents and all that stuff. But we just have to pay attention to our surroundings uh, big time. Uh, if we if we work in schools or hospitals or whatever, there's so many signs of, yeah. of abuse. And it doesn't have to be from a trafficker. Maybe it's a parent or, yeah. or a guardian or a mother's boyfriend that's doing something to kids. It's not that we just, oh, you know, we have to pay attention to all child abuse that's going on. Yeah. And Agreed. Um, the other thing is to support the organizations that are actually out there on the front lines, uh, you know, doing stuff because, you know, they always gave the analogy of a spear and there's people that's on this tip of the spear that's out there in battle fucking doing it. But the handle of that spear is just as important. So yeah. we can support those who, who are out there on the front lines, yeah. either uh, by spreading the word or making donations, uh, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is we could do. But uh, right. it's just also, talking about it and bringing more awareness to the, yeah. to the, to the situation, because like, it's like the story that's not getting told, you know, yeah. uh, in the mainstream media, you know, they want to just fill us in with like Biden said this and Trump denied it and this and that, and, you know, wear a mask and mm -hmm. do this and do that and all this other stuff. But there's millions of fucking kids out there, man, that, or even getting murdered, man, you know? Yeah, so. yeah they, it, it's, it's, and like, you know, when I, when I was, when I reached out to you and we were talking about this, I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm pretty uncomfortable. Like, you know, I don't know how that's going to look as an educator talking about, you know, sex trafficking and whatnot, but, you know, as you read into it and get more data and more stats and more research and seeing, I mean, like I said, it's happening in our backyards and we're well, not, look, we're not what even, happened, the stigmas are, uh, in, in, let's take, education right you're a teacher so look what happened with sex education in the 50s and 40s nobody yeah. talked about it nobody mm -hmm. but nope. then the education came uh you know of all this stuff that went down and it's like it's actually protecting the kids yeah so to say like i'm not going to talk about it because it's uncomfortable no we have to talk about uncomfortable uh, situations that are going on, but yeah. it's not that we have to stay within the letter of the law too. In in the school system, you know, a lot, you lot of red tape. On some fucking toes there, man. A lot of red tape. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and that's the thing. Like I, I've always preached. You know, knowledge is power. And what you know, if you're going on a mountain, you're going on a road trip or whatever, you need to know where you're going. You need to know the consequences that you might face. And just like sex, sex education to you know any any kind of drugs or whatnot, here's the things. If you take this, this is what's going to happen to you. This is what's going to happen to your body. This is going to happen to your mind. And so that's that's the educational piece that I would love nothing more to give. To, I mean, to, I think what you could do too is like just educate the children in terms of like the things that are allowed to be done, like, you know, stranger danger and all this right. stuff that's, that, you know, they have these, these methods now and teaching kids to stay together and <clears throat> don't talk to strangers and yep. like, you know, be aware of your surroundings. That's how these kids are getting snatched too, yeah. because they're walking around with fucking earbuds and iPods and headphones and they're fucking, and walking down the street playing fucking video games and some yeah. dudes come up, they don't even see them and snatch yeah. them in a fucking van. Yep. Oh. yep. Yeah, the kids no, I, have to be aware. Yeah, and I, I, it's even funny that you even say that because last week I, I did a whole lesson on just uh, your surroundings and where you're at, and you know I'm I'm in a, a a facility, and so it's in an outpatient facility, and so I have a little bit less. I have like seven kids in a class, and it's a little bit more free reign. Um, I try to keep it within the in the scope of you know not being so conservative, but you know, I, I told, I tell them, it's like, you, there's always four things you can do. Take, take inventory of what's going around you. Note you have any escape routes. And I, I try to put them in situations yeah. like, Hey, you're, you're in an alley. You have this way and this way, you know, just check that, make sure you know what you're doing, know your surroundings, like you're saying, and then be conscious, get, have a buddy system. Hey, I'm going to go meet this guy online. You know, I, I told him that I was like, that to me sounds so 
out of that's just ludicrous, right? And so, but Never if you're gonna anybody online, that's right. fucking no, no kid fucking that online shit, man. Oof. I'm gonna it's, go fucking have, you know, he's taking me out to eat. Like that's complete. And that's where these predators are. They they're yep. meeting a lot of these kids online and lying and, yep. and saying yep. they're fucking sixteen, and then it's a forty year old fucking dude showing up. Right, right. <laughs> I well, mean, there was a whole show about that to catch a predator. Yeah, well, and that's just a naiveness. I think along with the video games or whatever, they're well, they just take so naive. advantage of that. Yeah. These mm -hmm. these these are very diabolical, manipulative people that are doing this shit. Yep. They don't just snatch a kid. They sit there and they will, I mean, I'm looking at what Tim says. They mm. will sit there and mark their prey and watch for weeks to see what are your daily activities? What wow. is the best time to grab this kid? Wow. They're fucking, these are predators. Wow. And there's a whole method of operation of, that they utilize to snatch a kid. Right. Most of the time, it's not like, yeah, they just saw the opportunity and took it. Right. That's it's, like your drunk person. These, right. this is a whole, these, these are, these are fucking operatives, man, that wow. have businesses going and they have a whole MO, a method of operation to doing this. And they will watch the victims for weeks sometimes to see what the best opportunity is. They know their school schedule, if their mother works, when they're alone in the house, when are they, where do they walk? What do they do? Who are their friends? Like these, these people are just sick. They're diabolical, man. Yeah. And they're yeah. evil. And, uh, you know, that's why it's also good to, you know, change your roots home and don't always do the same thing all the time. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I, I actually wrote this manual about um, surviving on the streets of New York. And I took the tips that the cops who my friends who were cops told me that measures and uh, that women can take uh, on the streets to not be, uh, you know, not just abducted, but say sexually attacked or, yeah. or robbed or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, one of the main things was awareness of who's around you and yep. awareness of your situation. Yep. Yep. Take the fucking earbuds out, stop texting and going on Instagram, walking down the fucking street, <laughs> pay attention, right. change, you know, your, your, your meth, you, you know, change your, the way you, you, you walk sometimes home and, yeah. No. And I think those are the things that, you know, like you said, the school, the school of hard knocks that you're, where you're from, it's, uh, that's what this generation, you know, I'm, I'm generation X, you're a boomer, right? I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I've been taught by you guys to kind of, you know, challenge the system or whatever. And so, um, I'm trying to do that, but I'm also trying to, it's like, yeah. we had a saying on the streets of New York and, and when something was about to go down, you know, and we knew some, shit was about to go down we would go soa soa yeah that means state of alert mm -hmm. like yo pay attention because mm -hmm. so it could cost you your life yeah. yeah like yeah okay i'm i'm born in 1962 but guess what i've been on the fucking streets and in and and still dealing with modern culture even through this day i didn't like go off to the suburbs and have 2.3 fucking kids and cars and all this bullshit right and you know then have a midlife crisis down the road i've been involved in the fucking street culture and the music and the arts i never left yeah so i've seen this whole shit evolve yeah and well, that would street be a safety is fucking number one man and yeah. i tell my girl all the time too and like you know like it's it's you have to be fucking aware man you yeah. have to fucking pay attention you have to be aware you have to watch who's around you. Yeah. For kids, especially, you know, I, I saw this shit the other day and it was like this fucking kid was walking home. It was after school and they had the big headphones on and the kid was walking down the street just like 
on a fucking desolate street and yeah. just playing a fucking video game with the headphones and like just not even looking like yeah yeah that's part of the problem man yeah well and i and i know that there's been some uh i've seen some youtube videos where it was a setup like you said uh it was all in a learning where these guys act, actually abduct a kid from a, a playground it happens parent... it happens like that yeah yeah and when and and they totally goes down when yeah. they're done stalking their prey yep yeah it happens um, like that it's amazing though they had a, a parent in a park a uh, parent just set kid down to go play and then parent literally just turned around that. Right? and then these people and they planned it right they got and they took the kid away like hey come with me like and the kid was so you know kids are so innocent that's the thing kids kids they're are gonna do naive. they're trusting yeah it's like they're creative they want to go forward ingrain in them the danger that's out there yeah Crazy like world out there. Kids will yell, "Danger, danger, stranger, danger!" Like parents right. that teach their kids, like, I'm, yeah. you know, what do they say? Run and tell. That's that's the main thing. Get yeah. the fuck away and tell somebody, man, yep. right away. Yep. Because if he didn't get you, he's out there. These people don't stop. If they miss one mark, they'll fucking turn around and grab somebody else. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, I'm hoping that from this podcast, we can really give that information out, get that, you know, get any kind of knowledge out, get even just awareness. Um, and so, you know, uh, I went over, I apologize, man. Don't worry about it, man. Uh, cool. uh, I appreciate everything. And, um, you know, I'll, I'll get this uh, information out and cut it up and uh, probably get it out later today, if not tomorrow. And yeah. God bless you, man. Hey, you man, are you too, bro. Keep doing, keep doing the good work, man. Pay yeah. it forward. That's my teachers. When I asked them, how do I pay this back? They said, it's impossible. Pay it forward. Yeah, absolutely. You my, never mine... pay back the gifts, but you just pay it forward. Help the next people. Yep. You yep. know, yep. there's somebody else out there that needs the wisdom that you just gained with your health and mental health and sobriety and everything else. So yeah. That's how we help. We help each other, you know? Yeah, for sure. Service, service to others. But uh, John Joseph. Peace from New have, York. Have a good day, brother. Have a good day. Peace and veggie grease. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, man. Thank you so much. Have a good day. See ya.